I recently posted a video in which I created these fun jelly plate prints using a technique that I recently learned, which turned out to be a game changer. So if you want to know how I made these prints, please check out the video below. And you commented under that video that you would like to see me use some of these in my XL art journal. So you can also find a playlist below for this XL art journal, including a freebie for this vintage cover image. In addition, I want to use this gorgeous napkin that I received from dear Sherilyn. Not only does it have beautiful dragonflies, but it's also my colors, the blue and the yellow. How amazing is this? Thank you so much again, Sherilyn. These are just amazing. So if we try to combine the jelly plate prints and this image, which one would work best. In order to see these best, I think it would need a light background, something like this, for example, which has some lovely gold on it, or maybe this one also has beautiful gold on it. But I kind of want to know how it would look if we would choose colors that are in here as well so that it integrates better into the background. This blue is not quite it. This blue is very close to this blue here. The yellow is very similar. This might be an option, but I also am very intrigued with this option here because the blue here and here is very, very similar, but I don't know how well we're going to see these dragonflies on this background. I really think they will come out better on this one. So the first thing we need to do is separate the plies. As we know, most napkins have three plies, not all of them, but most of them. So that's one. There's definitely another layer. Sometimes they come apart very easily. This one does not. So we'll help it a little bit with some regular tape. I've even had napkins that have four layers, so you never know what you're going to get. So now we already kind of have an idea what this could look like. It will, of course, turn more transparent once we collage it onto the background. Yeah, but you see already they kind of disappear a little bit here. And on this one, they're definitely more visible. So I hope you join me. Find your own napkin image that you would like to integrate into your journal. And let's do this together. Whoops! <laughs> I just love these water brushes. Th first, nothing comes out and then a big blob comes out. So this kind of is not going to work. Let's let this one dry for future use and try it one more time. I would like to get fairly close to the image because I don't like so much of the white showing. So I'm just going around with my water brush, actually a regular paintbrush. I think, whoops, see, there were, oh, that was another big drop. I'm going to switch to a regular paintbrush. This is annoying. Okay, I have my jar of water. I have a thin paintbrush moving on to the next image. This one can dry in the meantime can use it another time. I do think I have more control now. Yeah, no big water blobs with this. It's also important not to go too close to the image, otherwise the image itself will tear. So you need to leave a little bit of a border. And if you're thinking, Barbara, why are you not just cutting it with scissors? I don't really like the straight edge of cutting it. I believe that the torn edge integrates better into the background. Dragonflies have long been symbols of transformation, adaptability, and self-realization in various spiritual traditions. Their spiritual meanings are rich and varied, drawing from their natural characteristics and behavior. Dragonflies go through a remarkable transformation in their life cycle, symbolizing personal transformation, growth, and change. Spiritually, they encourage us to embrace changes in our lives as they are often signs of inner evolution and new beginnings. 
known for their ability to move in all directions and adapt to their surroundings, dragonflies represent flexibility and adaptability. Spiritually, they remind us to be open to change and to navigate life with grace and agility. Dragonflies often symbolize lightness of being and joy. Their shimmering iridescent wings reflect light in beautiful ways, which is often seen as a metaphor for living in the moment and finding joy in life's fleeting moments. Wow, this dries really fast. It's so hot here <laughs> that the first part has dried before I'm even able to surround it once. Whoa, that has never happened before. Let's quickly try to tear this very carefully. Don't want to tear its wings. As creatures that dwell both in water and in the air, dragonflies are connected to their elements of water and air. Water symbolizes the subconscious, emotions and intuition while air represents thoughts and intellect. Spiritually, dragonflies encourage balance between emotional and intellectual aspects of life. The dragonfly's ability to reflect light and change color is often seen as a metaphor for self-realization and finding one's true nature. It encourages us to look beyond illusions and to seek deeper truths within ourselves. So there's our image. Let's check again. What would it look like? Yes, I think we'll be able to see that quite well. But before we decoupage that on here, let's think about what else we might want to add to this plain background. So first I want to add some stamping. And I'm going to use gold acrylic paint. This one is by Stamperia. And I want to use acrylic paint because I will be adding more wet media on top and I want to make sure this does not smear. You could use any permanent ink or if you wanted to use something like your Distress inks or oxides or any other water soluble medium, you could of course spray some fixative on top. I want to use this circle stamp right here by Stammers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. The number of this stamp set is, is note quotes CMS 463. I will link these for you below. Never actually used this one. But since we already have like a wonky circle theme here, why not stick to that? Then I'm just going to wait, let me move you over a little bit. So let's add some of it here and then take a brayer and roll that onto our stamp. Yep, that works really well. So we'll just continue with that process until we have enough circles. Nice. When you use acrylic paint on your stamps, be sure to clean them off right away. I'm also going to cut off this edge on top here, which I don't like much better. My next layer is going to be some stamping with some writing. I'm going to use this sentiment here from this very special stamp set. It's the first one by Stampers Anonymous in Tim Holtz. It's called Nature's Moments CMS 001. I don't know where this would still be available. I received this from my dear friend Louisa Heinzel, which makes it all the more special. And this sentiment says, live in the moment and make it so beautiful that it will be worth remembering. I don't think we'll really be able to read the sentiment in the end, but that doesn't matter. I'm stamping it more for the font than anything else. And I'm going to use black archival ink. So this is a permanent ink, making sure that it will not smear. Very, very, very important. We'll keep in mind kind of where the dragonflies will go approximately in the middle like this. So let's do one here. Oh, that is beautiful. 
Maybe we'll even be able to read it because of course we'll be able to see through the napkin. Hmm. So I guess we'll have it on there multiple times. Not sure how much sense that makes. <laughs> I think twice, is that enough? Or should we do some more like down here? Mm, no. Let's make sure this is really dry before we continue. I'm going to use a foam brush. You can use a regular paint brush and I'm going to use this Liquitex matte medium, which is quite fluid, which works really well for napkins because of course they tear easily. See, so this is why it was so important to only use permanent mediums. So let's add our dragonflies. Flatten it from the inside to the edges. Oh, we can totally read the sentiment. I love that. So let's add some more on top. Be very, very gentle. I'm thinking maybe a paintbrush actually would be better. Seems like this is quite rough. Let's try it with this paintbrush. Yes, this is better. I have more feeling for this now. And you don't want to go over it too often because that will just make your napkin more soft and tear more easily. You do want to make sure that every little piece is covered. So once this is dry, I would like to accentuate the dragonflies a little bit more. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some of this Distress Mica Stain in Winter Frost. I think this blue here is fairly similar to the bodies. So let's spray some here and take our paintbrush and add some here. That will, of course, also make them a little more shiny which is always good for dragonfly. I'll just go over the whole body and then maybe we can add some of the gold on top as well. Oh yeah, that definitely makes the body stand out more. You can even do the feet. So we have some shimmer going on here now. Then let's take some acrylic gold paint. It could also be a spray or anything else. We can take the original napkin as a guide to see where we need to add the gold back in. You see it's here on the body on these different sections. Maybe we'll add some in the eyes as well. Now they have googly eyes. <laughs> in many cultures, dragonflies are seen as messengers for the spirit world, bringing guidance and insights. They're often associated with spiritual awakening and higher consciousness, serving as reminders to stay connected to the spiritual realm. And let's add some to the wings, of course. And if you're not familiar with how I chose my brand name 49 Dragonflies or rather how the name chose me, I will also link the video below for you so you can hear the story of how that happened. You was just meant to be. Then I also want to add some white acrylic paint. Gesso would be another option. Because I don't like this here. I think it needs to stand out a bit more. And I want a clear definition of the body of the dragonfly. Maybe we can fade that out a little bit. I don't know if I love that. <laughs> But you know, that's what an art journal is for. It's for experimenting, trying new techniques, 
expanding your horizon, getting out of your comfort zone. At least that's what I want my art journal to be. Yours can be whatever you want it to be, obviously. <laughs> my aim is always, first of all, to have fun. That's uh, goal number one. <laughs> but also to learn something new by trying new things. I actually might also try that here around the wing where the napkin is not blending in so well to the background. It would probably make more sense if I had a white background. <laughs> the way dragonflies wings catch and refract light is symbolic of the thin veil between reality and illusion. They encourage us to see through illusions and gain clarity, urging us to live authentically and see things for what they truly are. Encountering a dragonfly in your life can be a sign to embrace change, remain adaptable and seek deeper truths within yourself. It may also serve as a reminder to find joy in the present moment and connect with your spiritual self. So now they stand out a little more. They look like they're glowing a little bit, which is fine, but I'm still not loving this. So I'm thinking maybe we need like a sketchy approach. Let's be bold. <laughs> this is a regular black ballpoint pen. This could go very wrong now. So I just want to kind of sketch out the whole dragonfly, make it look even more artsy and sketchy and maybe even a little bit more abstract. Oh, I don't like that head. Oh well. We're not being precious. Did we just make it better or worse? I am not sure. <laughs> Maybe it needs some white splatters. Let's find out together. Mm -hmm. I do like that. So I'm not loving all the clean edges here. So why don't we make some tears? Bend it up. A little bit. That's the beauty about working in a journal rather than making a card. <laughs> you can just destroy your piece of art. You don't have to be perfect. Another small one here. I like that better and now we'll just ink up those edges to define them a little bit more using walnut stain as usual. Hmm. And I'm wondering whether maybe we should add a little bit of water, especially to those places where we just tore. Maybe get a little more grunge on. Hmm. That might not be enough ink on the edges so maybe we'll just especially here where we have the folds and the tears add some more directly and then let's spritz a little bit of water so that that runs just a little bit So now we have this, I like this more already, but since this is quite flimsy, this jelly plate was just made on copy paper, we could give it a border. So I have this book here, which I used to clean my brayer. Maybe we can use one of these as a background. That might be a bit much, huh? Maybe something a little bit lighter. Yeah, I think 
I like this one, but I think I also want to add a little bit more of that mustard yellow. So I want to take my little brayer and the yellow ochre and just add that to my edges. So let's see. Yeah, I like that better. I'm not going to keep it as large as it is now. So let's tear this out. Ooh, we also have this yellow. I might even like that better. It's more cheerful, isn't it? Hmm. What do we think? Tough call, huh? No, I'll go with this one, but I'll definitely tear it down. I decided to sew around the edges, leaving out the parts that I tore. It gives another interesting look. And then we can glue that onto our page. Now we can take our tearing ruler and tear the edges down. And we can ink up these edges as well. And actually, if we were to put this on a plain cardstock, we could totally make it into a beautiful card. We could even try it with a blue, denim blue background. Even better, very cute, but we're not doing that. <laughs> not today, we wanted to add it to an art journal page, right? I think I want a smaller page to add this to. Maybe this one here. Well, that's pretty much a perfect fit. We could make that into a pocket. I always think it makes sense to add things as a pocket because it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to add something inside, but you have the option of doing so. So either it'll just be a plain page. Well, it's not that plain. <laughs> or you can stick something inside. Always good to have options. So even though we have sentiments in the background, they are more of a background. So I want to have like a real sentiment. I found this random one. Don't know where these are from. I'll use you are so loved. This is from me to you. You are so loved by me. Let's stick it here. And that's today's quick art journal page. Get out your napkins, see what you can do with them, and just have fun. Try something new. <laughs> Love you guys. Mwah! Mwah!